Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 36 on time series modeling and forecasting. In the last lecture, we discussed the idea of causality for multivariate time series. We in particular, we considered in Granger's causality and then we discussed various forms of Granger's causality. Say, uh, instantaneous causality or feedback or one directional causality or both directional causality etcetera. In this lecture, we are going to consider various causality tests. Uh, first, we will consider different causality tests for bivariate time series models. Then we will also discuss when you have more than two time series and uh, we consider the causality test for more than two time series processes. Uh, now, we consider causal analysis using bivariate VR and bivariate MA representations. The AR representation of the process is defined as so, A L Y T X T equal to alpha 1 1 L, alpha 1 2 L, alpha 2 1 L, alpha 2 2 L Y T X T which is equal to U T V T. Here A L is a matrix polynomial, its order is 2 cross 2. Then alpha J K L is equal to summation i equal to 0 to infinity, alpha J K i L to the power i j and k take values 1 and 2. Then alpha j k i is the coefficient of l to the power i in alpha j k l. To normalize the system, we take alpha 1 1 naught equal to alpha 2 2 naught equal to 1. Then alpha j k l is equivalent to 0 if all their coefficients alpha j k i are 0. U t and V t are white noise which might be correlated with each other. Now, x t does not trigger cause y t if alpha 1 2 l is equal to 0 or the corresponding coefficients alpha 2 1 to i equal to 0 for all i equal to 1 to so on. Then instantaneous causality exists if and only if the current value of u say u t is correlated with the current value of v t. So, if u t and v t are correlated then the instantaneous causality exists because in that case uh, the forecast error of y is reduced if the current value of x is included in the forecast regression. Either alpha 1 2 naught is not equal to 0 or alpha 2 1 naught is not equal to 0. So, either x is instantly causing y or y is instantly causing x. Now, we consider the MA representation of the process, which is y t x t equal to b l u t v t and then we write it as beta 1 1 l, beta 1 2 l, beta 2 1 l and beta 2 2 l u t v t. B l is the matrix polynomial with elements beta j k l, uh, j k equal to 1 2. And then beta j k l is equal to summation i equal to 0 to infinity, 
beta j k i l to the power i and we take beta 1 1 naught and beta 2 2 naught equal to 1. Then for the identifiability of the model, we also take beta 1 2 naught or beta 2 1 naught equal to 0. Otherwise, what happens? Both the models look alike. So, you would not be able to distinguish between two. So, we take beta 1 naught and beta 2 1 naught equal to 0. Then x t does not triangle cause y t if beta 1 to l is equal to 0 or beta 1 to i is equal to 0 for all i. Now, beta 1 1 l, beta 1 2 l, beta 2 1 l, beta 2 2 l is equal to alpha 1 1 l, alpha 1 2 l, alpha 2 1 l, alpha 2 2 l inverse. And since this is a 2 cross 2 matrix, you can easily find the inverse of this matrix. Determinant value of this matrix is alpha 1 1 l alpha 2 2 l minus alpha 1 2 l alpha 2 1 l, which is represented as eta l here. And then beta 1 1 l is equal to alpha 2 2 l divided by eta l beta 1 2 l is equal to minus alpha 1 2 l divided by eta l. In fact, we take cofactor of this matrix 2 by 2 matrix and then we divide each element by, correspond, by the determinant of the matrix that is eta l. Then we find beta 2 2 l is equal to alpha 1 1 l upon eta l and beta 2 1 l is equal to minus alpha 2 1 l upon eta l. And from here we observe that beta 1 2 l is equal to 0 implies that alpha 1 2 l is equal to 0 and beta 2 1 l is equal to 0 implies that alpha 2 1 l is equal to 0. Hence, x t does not triangle cause y t if beta 1 to l is equal to 0 or if beta 1 to i is equal to 0 for all i equal to 1 to so on. Then the hypothesis that all cross lax coefficients are 0 means uh, say suppose you want to test this hypothesis all beta 1 to i are equal to 0 can be tested using f test for testing significance of the coefficients. Now, we can characterize causal relations using residuals of individual univariate processes of x and y. In so far, we have considered the AR representation for characterizing the causal relations or MA representation for characterizing the causal relation. Now, we consider the residuals of individual univariate processes of x and y for characterizing the causal relation. So, using walled representation, we can express y t and x t by two separate m a processes of infinite order. So, now y t is a stationary process. So, we can write it as y t equal to psi 1 1 l a t, where psi 1 1 l is equal to or in general psi j k l is equal to summation i equal to 0 to infinity psi j k i l to the power i. And this a t is a purely random process. Similarly, in the MA representation of x t, we use the polynomial psi 2 2 l. 
and this Bt is a purely random process. Then we can write 3 in the form yt xt equal to psi l a t b t. We have this psi l is equal to psi 1 1 l is the 1 1 -th element of psi l, psi 2 2 l is a 2 2 -th element and 1 2 -th and 2 1 -th elements are equal to 0. So, psi, a, psi l is a diagonal matrix. Further, you can write y t x t equal to psi l psi l inverse b l u t v t. In fact, uh, y t x t is equal to b l u t v t. So, we have multiplied by psi l and then we have taken inverse of psi l here. So, you get y t x t equal to psi l psi l inverse b l u t v t and this is equal to psi l h l u t v t where h l is equal to psi l inverse b l. Again this h l is a 2 by 2 matrix and we write this h l as eta 1 1 l, eta 1 2 l, eta 2 1 l, eta 2 2 l. So, you get y t x t equal to psi l eta 1 1 l, eta 1 2 l, eta 2 1 l, eta 2 2 l u t v t. So, h l is equal to psi l inverse b l. So, from here you obtain a t b t is equal to psi l inverse y t x t or psi l inverse b l u t v t and psi l inverse b l is equal to h l u t v t. Now, remember that these a t and b t are the residuals for individual representations or individual m a representations of y t and x t. Then eta j k l is equal to beta j k l divided by psi j j l. This you get from here h l is equal to psi l inverse b l and this psi l is a diagonal matrix. Its diagonal elements are psi 1 1 l psi 2 2 l. So, this is actually equal to psi 1 1 l inverse 0 0 psi 2 2 l inverse and then you have b l which is beta 1 1 l beta 1 2 l beta 2 1 l and beta 2 2 l. So, from here we obtain eta j k l equal to beta j k l divided by psi j j l for j k equal to 1 2. So, for instance for j and k both equal to 1 you have eta 1 1 l equal to beta 1 1 l this divided by psi 1 1 l. Then alpha 1 2 l is equal to 0 implies that beta 1 2 l equal to 0 and this further implies that eta 1 2 l is equal to 0. 
So, x t does not Granger cos y t if eta 1 to l is equal to 0 or eta 1 to i the corresponding coefficients are equal to 0 for all i. Then the cross covariance between a t and b t is gamma a b k is equal to expectation of a t b t minus k. Now, this is equal to expectation you write a t equal to eta 1 1 l u t plus eta 1 2 l v t into b t minus k is eta 2 1 l u t minus k plus eta 2 2 l v t minus k. So, we write the values of a t and b t minus k here and this is equal to eta 1 1 l u t into eta 2 1 l u t minus k plus expectation of eta 2 1 l u t minus k eta 1 2 l v t plus expectation of eta 1 1 l u t eta 2 2 l v t minus k plus expectation of eta 1 2 l v t into eta 2 2 l v t minus k. Then assuming no instantaneous causality u t and v t dash are uncorrelated for all t and t dash. So, these are purely random processes and uh, in case of instantaneous causality u t and v t will be correlated and if there is no instantaneous causality then u t and v t dash are uncorrelated for all t and t dash even for t equal to t dash u t and v t are uncorrelated. So, we obtain gamma a b k equal to expectation of eta 1 1 u t eta 2 1 l u t minus k plus we remove this term because this involves both u t and v t. We also ignore this term this has expectation 0 because it involves both u t and v t. Then you have the last term expectation of eta 1 to l v t plus eta into eta 2 to l v t minus k. Now, when x does not Granger cos y then you have eta 1 to l equal to 0 and uh, in that case a t is equal to eta 1 1 l u t. Both u t and a t are white noise processes and then uh, both the representations of y t one with u t and another with a t are y t equal to beta 1 1 l u t and y t equal to psi 1 1 l a t. So, you have these two representations of y t and in both the representations u t and a t are white noise processes. So, uh, this implies that eta 1 1 l is equal to 1. Remember that uh, y t is a stationary process. So, it has a unique uh, infinite order m a or infinite order auto regressive representation. So, from here you obtain eta 1 1 l equal to 1 and uh, remember eta j k l is equal to beta j k l divided by psi j j l. Further, this implies that a t is equal to u t. Then gamma a b k is equal to expectation of u t eta 2 1 l u t minus k and this is equal to 0 because this second term does not involve u t and u t is a purely random process. So, u t is uncorrelated with, with eta 2 1 l u t minus k 
and this expectation is equal to 0 then. So, the cross correlation rho a b k is equal to 0 for all k. Similarly, when y does not cause x, rho a b k is equal to 0 for all k and this is for instantaneous causality. So, if x does not instantaneous cause y or y does not instantaneous cause x, then rho a b k is equal to 0 for all k. Or you can say when x and y are independent, rho a b k is equal to 0 for all k. Now, this result actually forms the basis for half Pierce causality test, which we will discuss later on. Now, we consider different causality tests. The first one is the direct Granger procedure and this procedure was uh, proposed by Thomas Sargent in 1976. Now, suppose uh, x t and y t are two stationary time series, then test for simple causality from x to y is equivalent to examining whether the lagged values of x in the regression of y on lagged values of x and y significantly reduce the error values or not. So, if we consider the models m 1 y t equal to alpha naught, summation k equal to 1 to k 1, alpha 1 1 k y t minus k plus u t and m 2 is the model y t equal to alpha naught plus summation k equal to 1 to k 1, alpha 1 1 k y t minus k plus summation k equal to k naught to k 2, alpha 1 to k x t minus k plus u t. You have these two models. So, this model 1 does not involve the lagged values of x, whereas the second model involves the lagged values of x. Both the models involve the lagged values of y, but the first model does these are the lagged values of y. So, both the models involve lagged values of y, but the first model does not involve lagged values of x, whereas the second model involves lagged values of x. So, according to the first model, x does not Granger cause y, and according to the second model, x Granger cause y. So, for testing whether x Granger causes y or not, you have to test the hypothesis whether these coefficients alpha 1 to k for all values of k are significant or not. Then before that we estimate both the models using least squares with k naught equal to 1, usually we take k naught equal to 1. Then the Granger causality index is defined as g c i equal to log of sigma hat square u 1 divided by sigma hat square u 2, where the sigma hat square u 1 is the estimated error variance for the model 1 and sigma hat square u 2 is the estimated error variance for the model 2. So, basically you want to test the null hypothesis H naught alpha 1 to 1 is equal to alpha 1 to 2 equal to so on equal to alpha 1 to k equal to 0. 
and testing this hypothesis is equivalent to testing H naught the true model is M 1 against H 1 the true model is M 2. True model M 1 means X does not bring a cause Y and true model M 2 means X Granger cause Y. Uh, again we have taken K naught equal to 1. So, we have overruled the possibility that there is instantaneous causality. Now, suppose R RSS 1 is the residual sum of squares for the fitted model M 1, RSS 2 is the residual sum of squares for the fitted model M 2. Then for testing the significance of difference between these variances, you can use the Fisher F statistic, which is F equal to RSS 1 minus RSS 2 divided by K 2 this divided by RSS 2 divided by N minus K 1 minus K 2 minus 1. And under the null hypothesis that X does not Granger cause Y, this statistic follows F distribution with K 2 n minus k 1 minus k 2 minus 1 degrees of freedoms. So, the test statistic for obtaining this test statistic you simply have to run uh, least square regression for model 1, least square regression for model 2. Then we obtain the residual sum of squares for the fitted model M 1 and residual sum of squares for the fitted model M 2. And then you can compute this F statistic. And uh, since under H naught this statistic follows F distribution with K 2 and minus K 1 minus K 2 minus 1 degrees of freedoms. You can easily uh, form the critical region for testing H naught. If this calculated value is greater than the tabulated value say at 100 alpha percent level of significance, uh, then we reject H naught otherwise we accept H naught. And that uh, critical value or tabulated value you get from the F table. Then interchanging X and Y in M1 and M2, a simple causal relation from Y to X can be tested. Say we have tested whether X triangle causes Y or not, and uh, in the same set of if you interchange the roles of x and y, you replace x by y and y by x, then you can test the hypothesis whether y x Granger causes x or not. Again, you have to use the f test. Now, if the null hypothesis is rejected in both the directions, we conclude that there is a feedback relation. If the null hypothesis is accepted in both the directions, then you say that neither x Granger causes y nor y Granger causes x. But if null hypothesis is rejected in both the directions, then we say that there is a feedback relationship between x and y that is x Granger causes y and y Granger causes x. Then for testing instantaneous causality, you set K naught equal to 0 in M 2 and then you test the hypothesis H naught alpha 1 to naught is equal to 0 using t test. So, this is simple. 
suppose you want to test the instantaneous causality, then you take k naught equal to 0 in the second model and k naught equal to 0 means you have involved a term containing x t the current value of x in the model m 2 and under h naught h naught is the hypothesis that there is no instantaneous causality or alpha 1 to naught is equal to 0, you can apply the usual t test means t test for testing the significance of a single regression coefficient. Now, there are some shortcomings of this test. The results are strongly dependent on the number of lags of the explanatory variable k 2. So, under the model m 2 or the model under the alternative hypothesis, we have included number of lags for the explanatory variable up to k 2. And the results of the test strongly depend upon the value of k 2. Then there is a trade off, the more lagged values we include the better the influence of this variable can be captured. So, if you increase the value of k 2, it means you are capturing more the effect of more lagged values of the variable x, but the power of the test decreases as more lagged values are included. But if you include less lagged values, then uh, it may happen that the values which you have ignored have influence on y. So, that influence will not be captured. So, this there is a trade off between these two. Then the option is use different values of k 2 and of course, of k 1 also. Usually, we start with k 1 equal to 1, but you may select a different value of k 1 also. So, we use different values of k 2 and k 1 to inspect the sensitivity of the results to the number of lagged variables. And then you use different information criterion also say Akai K information criterion or Bayesian information criterion to select K 2 and K 1. So, you try different values of K 2 or K 1 and then you select a model using some information criterion like AIC or BIC. So, this is one option. Now, we come to half Pierce test. In this test, what we do? We fit univariate ALMA models for x t and y t. And then we obtain the estimated residuals, uh, say b t head is the estimated residual for x t and a t head is the estimated residual for y t. Then we obtain the cross correlations between b t head and a t head say rho head a b k. For different values of k, we obtain the cross correlations between these two residual series b t head and a t head. Uh, remember that we have already shown that if you have uh, alma representation for x t individual series x t and individual series y t, 
and uh, if there is no causality, then the corresponding residuals are uncorrelated. And this just uses the same logic. Say we fit ARMA models for individual series, we compute the estimated residual series say B T head and A T head and then we obtain the cross correlations between these two estimated residual series say rho head A B K. Then we use box pairs Q statistic or box young Q statistic to test the null hypothesis that the estimated the res residuals are white noise. And if hypothesis are not accepted, then we calculate the following statistic S equal to n summation k equal to k1 to k2 rho hat square a b k. You may take k1 equal to 1. So, you may start with k1 equal to 1. But before that, you must test the null hypothesis that the estimated residuals are white noise. Otherwise, you have to modify the ARMA process which you have fitted to x t and y t. Then under the null hypothesis H naught, rho a b k is equal to 0 for all k and we are going up to lag k to say. And so, this k lies between k 1 and k 2. And under, under this null hypothesis, this statistic s is asymptotically distributed as chi square with k 2 minus k 1 minus 1 degrees of freedoms. Now, you can form a crit critical region. Say suppose uh, you want to test this hypothesis H naught, rho A B K is equal to 0 for all k, k lying between k 1 and k 2. Then you calculate this statistic and if you are using say 100 alpha percent level of significance, then from chi square table you obtain the tabulated value at k 2 minus k 1 minus 1 degrees of freedoms. You compare the two values, if calculated value is less than the tabulated value, then we accept null hypothesis, otherwise we reject the null hypothesis. And accepting the null hypothesis means there is no causality or rejection of null hypothesis means there is causality either x causes y or y causes x. Now, whether there is any causal relation check for k 1 less than 0 and k 2 greater than 0. And if this hypothesis can be rejected causal relation from x to y can be checked if k 1 is equal to 1 and k 2 greater than or equal to 1. So, first we also check this hypothesis for k 1 less than 0 and k 2 greater than 0. And uh, if we reject this hypothesis, then we start from k 1 equal to 1 and k 2 greater than or equal to 1. In the reverse direction for k 1 less than or equal to minus 1 and k 2 equal to minus 1, it can be checked whether there is a simple causal relation from y to x. So, you can also check if there is any simple causal relation from y to x and for that purpose you have to take k 1 less than or equal to minus 1 
and k 2 equal to minus 1. So, you are moving in the reverse direction and it can be tested for using rho a b 0 whether there exist any instantaneous relationship. Now, suppose we have m times series z j t j equal to 1 to m. Then we extend the estimating equation so that we include all these m times series also. So, our estimating equation is now y t equal to alpha naught plus alpha plus k equal to 1 to k 1 alpha 1 1 k y t minus k plus summation k equal to 1 to k 2 alpha 1 to k x t minus k. Then we have another term j summation j equal to 1 to n k equal to 1 to say k j plus 2 beta j k z j t minus k plus u t. So, all these m times these are included in this term. So, we have incorporated all these m times series in the estimating equation. Beta j k is the coefficients corresponding to additional variables. Then after first we determine the values of k 1, k 2, k 3, so on k m plus 1. Then after determining these values, we estimate the model using least squares. Then using f test, we can test hypothesis such as whether different coefficients of x variables are significantly different from 0 or not. Then we can also test if there exists a simple causal relation from x to y or feedback. Then the significance of coefficients of other times these j's can also be tested by using the f test. So, the advantage with Granger's test is that it can be extended for more than two time series also. Then uh, for systems with more than two variables, are the inferences drawn from bivariate tests misleading? If you have more than two variables, say instantaneous relations detected with the direct Granger procedure or, or half Pierce test using bivariate tests are only preliminary. Definite evidence about whether these relations are real or spurious can be drawn in a complete model using additional information. So, if you have some additional time series also, so unless you uh, include that additional information in your model, your uh, inferences may be misleading as per instantaneous relations are concerned or instantaneous causality is concerned. Then if third variables are ignored, conclusion regarding feedback relation might be spurious. So, here also you get some wrong inferences if you ignore the other variables which are relevant. Then inclusion of other relevant variables might reduce it to a one sided relation. Suppose you have a feedback relation and uh, if you include other relevant variables, then the inference drawn on the basis of your wrong model, the model which has not included many relevant variables. Uh, and your inference was there is a feedback, then that feedback relation might be reduced to a one sided relation. If the relation between x and y is only one sided in the bivariate model, there are no third variables which are causal, Granger causal to x and y. So, in this case, if the relation between x and y is only one sided in the bivariate case, then there are no third variables which are Granger causal to x and y. Uh, so, in this lecture, we have discussed uh, 
how you can represent causal relationships or causality for the uh, auto regressive and moving average representations of the process. We have also considered different causality tests, so a direct Granger procedure or half pierce test. Uh, we observe that in direct Granger's procedure, you require lag length of x t's and uh, if you incorporate more than desirable uh, terms of lag, then the test will be less powerful. On the other hand, if you uh, reduce the, the lag length and some of the relevant lag values of x are uh, excluded, then again it may lead to wrong conclusion because you are losing some uh, relevant information. Uh, then half uh, Pierce procedure does not require such kind of lag length. For half Pierce procedure, you just uh, fit uh, different ALMA processes for the two time series, then you obtain estimated residuals. Then the procedure is based on testing the significance of cross uh, correlations for the two series. Uh, we also discussed how to select lag length in direct triangles procedure and then we consider the case when you have more than two time series. Of course, half pierce procedure cannot be extended for the case when you have more than two time series, uh, but uh, you can extend the Granger's direct procedure to include this case, means the case when you have some other time series also apart from x t and y t. And we also observe that if uh, you discard some of the relevant time series, then it may lead to wrong conclusion regarding the causality. So, for example, it may lead to feedback relation when there is no feedback relation. So, the test based on two time series x t and y t leads to the conclusion that the two time series have feedback. But actually, if you include some other relevant time series, then you get the conclusion that there is one directional causality only. Similarly, for the instantaneous causality also, if uh, you are excluding some of the relevant time series from your estimating equation then it may lead to wrong conclusion. So, it is very important to formulate your model or to identify your relevant variables to be included in the estimating equation. Otherwise, uh, your test procedure will not lead to proper conclusions. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you. Hi, I am Chitwan Lalji, a PhD student of Health Economics under the supervision of Dr. Debian Pakrashi uh, from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. In one of my essays, I am interested in understanding the relationship between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. Health indicators, both subjective and objective health indicators like mental health, self-assessed health, various measures of blood pressure and various measures of cholesterol. Uh, measures of blood pressure like systolic and diastolic BP, 
you have your incidence of high BP MAP and incidence of high MAP. And as far as cholesterol is concerned, I have tried to concentrate more on total cholesterol, good cholesterol and incidence of high cholesterol. Now before I go on to what have been my major contributions and various policy implications, I would like to briefly tell you about the policy initiatives of WHO and various countries. The WHO that is the World Health Organization, it started with a campaign of five a day. That is you should have five portions of fruits and vegetables per day. That would be approximately you could say 400 grams of fruits and vegetables. Now a portion, before we go further, I'll just tell you what exactly is a portion. One portion is equivalent to a medium sized apple or one small glass of fruit juice which is approximately 150 milliliters and uh, maybe three teaspoons of vegetables. So uh, the WHO went with a five a day campaign which was further taken up by various countries. Countries like UK, Netherlands, Germany, Norway, they adopted the five a day policy while some went for expansionary dietary policies like France, Australia, Canada, Denmark. So for example, Australia, it went for go for 2 plus 5 policy in which it said that you should consume five por 2 portions of fruits and 5 portions of vegetables per day. And USA went for a policy of fruits and vegetables, more matters. That is, you must consume more and more fruits and vegetables. Now, irrespect of these expansionary dietary policies and dietary propagations, it has been found that only 28% of women and 25% of men they actually meet the recommended dietary norms of five a, po five a day portion. So the major contribution of my work is firstly to find an association between fruits and vegetables, whether there exists a relationship between fruits and vegetables and health indicators. And if they exist, whether if due to heterogeneity in the data, so I will be doing it according to age, by gender and by uh, your weight. So apart from that, I will go for policy recommendations in which I, will, I am basically studying uh, how much fruits and vegetables matter, apart from that, which type matters more. So for that, I have taken data from the Health Survey of England. Health Survey of England is an annual survey which takes uh, data, which conducts information regularly on demographic and socioeconomic characteristics. You have your lifestyle behaviors like an individual smokes or doesn't smoke, alcohol consumption, you have your sedentary and physical activities and you have various health uh, indicators also which have been collected. Uh, so uh, before I go on to what exactly is my research, I would like to concentrate more on fruits and vegetables like what kind of questions were asked in the survey. Questions like what kind of fresh fruit do you eat? Did you eat any dried fruit yesterday? Don't count dried fruits in cereals, cakes. Apart from that, for vegetables, they asked how many tablespoons of vegetables did you eat yesterday? So approximately after this whole survey was conducted, data was converted into portions of fruits. And uh, like for example, three, por three tablespoons of vegetables is equivalent to one portion. So data was converted and provided to the users, that is us from the UK data health survey. So the major con contributions of my paper is that I found a strong negative association between uh, intake of fruits and self-assessed health, then various measures of uh, blood pressure like mean arterial pressure, high mean arterial pressure, high blood pressure, systolic and diastolic BP and your total cholesterol. Apart from that, I have found a strong positive association between consumption of vegetables and good cholesterol. So it is recommended in a way that if you want to control your blood pressure, you must consume more and more fruits. And as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact your good cholesterol. Apart from that, I went in for a falsification test. A falsification test is basically conducted to know whether the model that you have adopted and the conclusions that you are drawing are not spurious. So if uh, a falsification test is done to know, in a way it is tested by seeing an indicator, a health indicator which is not being impacted by your consumption of fruits and vegetables. And then see, we see whether there is significant result or not. If there is no significant result, that means your model is good and your results are non-spurious. So what we did is for falsification test, we took ear complaints and infectious diseases. Now ear complaints like if you are deaf since birth or you have some kind of imbalance body imbalance that is not being impacted by your post consumption of fruits and vegetables and we did find insignificant results. Apart from that infectious diseases like 
HIV, A, HIV, AIDS, etc., we found similar insignificant results, indicating that our, uh, that our results are not spurious, non spurious. Apart from that, we went, uh, since there was a, a lot of heterogeneity in the data, like uh, by gender, by age, and by weight, we, can, we did the regression analysis. We found results which stated that as far as uh, fruits are concerned, it impacts a male's health more than a female's health. So it is basically said a, a man should consume more fruits to impact his health, whereas as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact a women's health more. But this has been only seen as far as cholesterol is concerned, the various measures of cholesterol like total cholesterol, good cholesterol and your incidence of getting high cholesterol. Now after this, we went in for a policy implication and in the policy implication, we found, we tried to find two policy implications, what matters and exactly how much portion matters. So as far as how much portion matters, we have found that on an average, five or more portions of fruits impact your overall health, that is your self-assessed health, your MAP, your incidence of high MAP and incidence of high BP. But if you want to have a good mental health, so you can optimize your mental health by consuming three or four portions of fruits as well. And similarly, has, uh, as far as self-assessed health and total cholesterol is concerned, an individual must consume four to five portions to optimally have the impact of consumption of fruits. Apart from that, vegetables have had a very little impact on your health. It only impacts your incidence of getting high MAP and high BP. And uh, you, it's seen that only it impacts when you consume five or more portions of fruits. So an optimum consumption of five or more portions of fruits and vegetables are recommended. But fruits have a more impact on your overall health, on various measures like self-assessed health, mental health, your various measures of blood pressure and various cholesterol levels. Another thing that we find is which type of fruit matters. It has been seen that all size fruits, they impact your self-assessed health, your systolic and diastolic blood pressure, your mean arterial pressure, your high BP and incidence of getting high MAP and high cholesterol. But we find that uh, as far as frozen fruits or canned fruits are concerned, they have a, they help in regulating your incidence of getting high MAP or high BP, but it has a trade-off that means there is something negative happening, it reduces the good cholesterol in your body. Apart from this, it, if, you ha if you have an incidence of getting high cholesterol, it is recommended that you must consume fruit juices because it has a s impact in reducing your probability of getting high cholesterol. And uh, dried fruits, they impact your self-assessed health. As far as vegetables are concerned, very little impact has been seen. It has only been seen in case of uh, uh, portion of salads and its association with self-assessed health. Another thing that they have seen is vegetables in composite, they have an association with good cholesterol. So overall, my research basically says that there is an association between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. And um, it is highly recommended that an individual in order to be healthy must consume five or more portions of fruits and five or more portions of vegetables per day. But fruits have a more impact on your overall health. Apart from that, all size fruits, they have a better impact on your overall health, your mental health, various measures of blood pressure and cholesterol. So thank you.